nine. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engines. Welcome to part eight of our video series highlighting the one one hundredth scale Saturn V kit from Estes. In this episode, we'll be installing the cable raceway details to the sides of the first and second stages. Some references call these external systems tunnels or systems conduits, but whatever we choose to call them, the purpose is the same. These are features on the Saturn V booster through which a variety of things are routed, generally on the outside of propellant and oxidizer tanks. Electrical systems, fluid and gas plumbing, telemetry systems, and more snake through these tunnels. Even the flight termination system, the self-destruct capability that is built into all large boosters for range safety, is installed in the cable raceways. On our kit, these are represented by half-round styrene strips. We'll cut and fit these into the details that are already in place on the vacuform detail wraps, along with the guidance lines that we drew on the airframe earlier. There are similar details that we've already installed on the third stage of our model. Although the raceways are flat on the third stage, their purpose is exactly the same. The kit provides three sections of half round styrene stock. Now we're going to use two of these for the lower sections on the first stage, while the third piece will be used for this section on the simulated second stage. We're going to cut and mark the first segment on the simulated first stage, and I'm going to cut it slightly long. The reason for that is that it's always easier to subtract material than to add material. We're going to cut this using this X-Acto razor saw. Now if I had one of the nifty little miter boxes that X-Acto offers, I would use it here. We have a clean cut there. Now I'm going to resist the urge to sand this. The reason is we may need to shorten this up a bit and I don't want to distort that edge at all. Let's bring in our part. First stage is back and it is slightly long but just barely. Now it's not readily apparent here from this view but the Sections here where our part will interface have a bevel. So what we'll need to do is slightly bevel the ends of our styrene stock. I'm using a medium sanding stick for this and as I do this, I'm trying to keep it as square as possible to this dimension of the styrene. And you can see the angle I'm putting into it here. We'll do the same thing at the other end. We'll test this fit. Closer, but still no cigar. Closer again. So close. The length is now accurate. The next thing we need to do is correct for this step. You can see that there is a step in the styrene right here. The way we're going to correct for that is to cut a similar step into the bottom edge of this piece. This is very simple to do. I'm just going to cut the gentle pressure downward on the styrene piece and then slice in from the end, hoping I don't cut my fingers off. And I now have a step. 
It fits beautifully at this end. We'll do the same thing at the other end. And that looks fantastic as well. The only thing I don't like at this point is that the entire strip sits a billionth of a millimeter too high. So I think what I'd like to do is sand the back of it a little bit so that it fits down and the tops flow a little bit better. We can use a sanding bar to take some of the thickness off the piece. Still a hair high. I'm going to adjust one of the steps a bit. And that's fantastic. We'll glue that in place. Let's do a dry run of this gluing operation. We have our fitted part. We're going to apply some Tamiya Extra Thin Cement to each end. Position those in place. Hold them down till they set. Check alignment with a ruler. And then once we're satisfied with the alignment, we'll run some additional adhesive underneath the length of the part, along the edge. Capillary action will bring the glue into place. Now, one of the interesting things about this primer we've used is that the glue will stick to that. Let's go ahead and do this. We have our adhesive just off screen. I'm going to put some on the underside of both ends. I'll set that in place, press it down, adjusting continuously. I'm going to put a little more adhesive at this end. It is being stubborn with me. There's some flex in the part. Let's check our alignment. I'm going to flow some adhesive along the sides. We'll check alignment again. I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees so I can get to the other side. Check alignment again. That's in place. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and tape down the ends so they're less likely to pop up. This aft section will be done the same way we did the forward section. We'll cut it to length, bevel the ends, carve the step into the bottom, reduce the overall height of the piece, and glue it in place. As we watch this footage flash by, there's a couple of things I hope you'll take note of. First, note that I have a Band-Aid on my fingertip here. So the message there is, don't be a dumbass like me. Be careful with your blade. Second, note how many times I refit and retrim and readjust things here. The difference between a good model and a mediocre model are little things like that. Doing that additional extra fit that's going to make your model look great. We'll complete that on the other side of the model next. All of the cable raceways are in place and we're simply waiting for the adhesive to cure. This is a good time to discuss launch lugs. The kit is provided with a couple of molded launch lugs designed to be used with a quarter inch launch rod. One of them will be installed just above the aft wrap and the other is installed a quarter of an inch below this mid wrap. If you decide to go this way, you can use either epoxy or tube type cement to install these. Personally, I prefer rail buttons, and there are a couple of reasons for that. First, there's no rod whip. 
the rod doesn't whip back and forth, sending the rocket off on a non-vertical trajectory. Second, I can install these after all of our paint and finishing work is done as one of the last items on our model. Let's turn our attention back to our cable raceways. I'd like to refine these joints just a little bit more here. The first thing we can do is just give them a few passes with a sanding stick. This is a medium sanding stick. Let's go to a fine sanding stick now. What we'd like to do is eliminate any hint of an obvious step between these sections. We've still got a bit of a gap here. We can fix that with a little bit of putty. This is Tamiya putty. No, Tamiya does not have me on payroll. I'm going to squeeze a little bit onto a index card there. And then I'm going to take a sculpting tool. This is part of a set of sculpting tools that I picked up very inexpensively at a local craft store. And I find it's great for applying tiny amounts of putty to small spots like this. Use the putty as sparingly as you can. The reason for that is that we don't want to have to spend all day getting the excess off. I'll apply a little to this joint as well. This joint doesn't need nearly as much. We'll let the putty dry for a couple of hours. Our putty has had the opportunity to dry overnight and now we need to remove most of it. Now the traditional way to do that is with some type of sanding tool. Here's a sanding stick, that would work fine. Uh, another opportunity might be uh, a file. That would work as well. Both of those approaches are fairly time consuming though. I've got another way to remove putty and I'd like to share it with you now. We're going to use some lacquer thinner to remove most of it. Now, full disclosure, I did not invent this process. I stole it from a very gifted modeler by the name of Floyd Werner, who specializes primarily in Luftwaffe and helicopter subjects. What we're going to do is use Tamiya lacquer thinner. Don't use anything else. This is a very mild lacquer thinner, and a traditional lacquer thinner, such as an automotive thinner, might melt straight through the plastic on our model. We don't want to do that. Use this. We're also going to use all of the Q-tips ever made in history. Let me show you how this works. We're going to moisten one of the Q-tips in the lacquer thinner and then gently drag it across the area where the putty has been applied. Now it takes a little while to get going. Rotate the Q-tip as you go, and gradually it will pick up the excess putty, leaving plenty down in the seam that we're filling. This may be tough to see. We're using a white Q-tip on white plastic. It's the whitest thing ever. It's like a Friends episode. Let's use the other end of the Q-tip now. I'm going to moisten it. What happens is that the putty starts to get caught in the fibers of the Q-tip. In other words, the Q-tip fills up. That's why it uses so many of these. Time for a new Q-tip. Use the other end now. There, I've got a really nicely finished seam right there with no damage to the plastic. Let's do this next one. The Q-tip filled up again, so I swapped ends. The Q-tip doesn't need to be soaking wet with thinner, it just needs to be dampened. And that Q-tip is filled up.
Now again, if you tried to use a traditional automotive lacquer thinner to do this, we would melt straight through this thin vacuform plastic. So don't do that. Time to swap ends. And there, I really like these two joints. We'll go ahead and complete the joints on the rest of the cable raceways. I'd really like for everybody to get a good view of this, so I've brought the camera unusually close for this particular seam. We'll swap ends. Time for a new Q-tip. There we go. I'm very pleased with that. We've successfully filled all the seams on the cable raceways on our model, and we're ready to move on. Almost. I did find one small tear in the vacuform wrap right up here on one of these conduits. I'd like to show you a quick and easy way to fix those. I've turned the model around so we can get a little bit better access to this tear in the vacuform. How did this happen? Probably handling. It's a, an ugly truth of the aerospace world that more aerospace products are damaged sitting in hangars than they are in actual flight. That's true for models as well. So what we're going to do is take some medium CA glue, apply it sparingly to the repair, and then hit that with some accelerator. We'll then sand that off. CA glues, especially medium CA, has tremendous gap filling capabilities. Now just off camera, I have an index card with a tiny little puddle of medium CA glue. I'm picking some of that CA glue up on the end of a toothpick. I'm going to gently apply it to the damage. I'm then going to take a tissue and wick a good bit of that away. I'll then bring in our accelerator and just put a drop right there. Wipe away any excess. I've got a sanding stick here and I'm just going to restore the profile of the original part. The first four to six hours after you set up a CA joint, it's very pliable and workable. We can take sandpaper to this and fix it. After that time, however, it becomes rock hard and unworkable, so we need to move quickly. I'm bringing in a round file to get down into a crevice here. Wonderful. With some primer over that, no one but you and God will know it's there. And with that, construction of our lower airframe is complete and ready for paint. In our next installment, we'll focus on construction of the forward end of the Saturn V, including the command module, service module, launch escape system, and lunar module adapter. Thanks for watching.